Okay, today I'm going to show you how to cross-pollinate Saracenia flowers. Now, the Saracenias flower early spring, it's now late March. Generally they flower before they produce their leaves, so you get a big crop of flowers before anything else. Um, the, the Saracenia flowers are, are quite unusual. Of the eight species of plants and many, many hybrids, the flowers differ in, in uh, size and colour, but the structure on all of them is absolutely identical. As an example, this is a Saracenia flava flower, so it produces a yellow petal. You've got five petals here that, that hang out of the flower. And this is a Saracenia alata flower, a much paler flower and much smaller in size. The species flowers are either yellow like these or red. Um, an example of red flower species would be Saracenia purpurea and Saracenia rubra. But as I say, whatever the, whatever the, 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 the uh, size and the colour, structurally they're all the same. Now it's, it's an unusual structure, and here's a, a flower that I've removed some of the petals on. And you can see you have the, the petals that hang out of the flower. You've got underneath this sort of umbrella-like structure. Now the umbrella structure um, ends in five tips, which are the receptive stigma tips, which will accept the pollen. And it may be easier to see it on a diagram. If you look on here, you can see you've got the petals here that will be hanging out of the flower, and then the umbrella structure underneath. And at the tip of the five tips of the umbrella, you've got these little tiny nodes here, which are the receptive stigmas. So what we need to do <coughs> when we're, we're cross-pollinating flowers is to transfer the pollen that collects in this umbrella structure which is released by the anthers here onto the receptive tips at the edge of the umbrella structure. Sounds a bit complex, but I'll show you how it's done. <coughs> now I say cross-pollinate. When we cross-pollinate a flower, we're, we're pollinating it with pollen from another flower, from another plant. They've got to be genetically distinct. Now Saracenias are unusual in that if you've just got, say, one plant with one or two flowers on, you can actually self-pollinate them. So you, you're actually pollinating the plant with its own pollen. Any resulting seedlings and plants won't be as strong or as vigorous as if you cross them with a, a, a different genetic clone, but it will still work. So using <coughs> the flower flower here as an example, the pollen as I mentioned is released from the, the anthers at the top here on the inside and collects in the base of the umbrella structure. So using a small paintbrush, all you need to do is gather up some of the pollen from the inside of the umbrella. You can't actually see it on here, it's very fine, but very sort of pale yellow dust. And then, ideally on another flower, you would transfer this pollen onto the inside little tips at the end of the umbrella. And say there are five of them, so you can transfer pollen onto all five. When that's done, just leave the flower on the plant, obviously. When the flower's spent, the petals drop off anyway. So what you're left with for most of the growing season is a seed head structure that looks a bit like that. Now over the course of the summer, this seed head will gradually tip up, ready for when the seeds are shed in the autumn. And the seeds themselves are produced in a pod underneath where the anthers are. Let's pull the anthers out of this one. Now this quite often confuses people. Um, when the flower is, is, is spent, the anthers here, you can see them, they all drop into the, into the umbrella structure. People quite often think that they're the seeds and will plant them and of course nothing will happen. You need to wait until the pod in the middle of the flower, just inside here, has, has swollen up um, and the flower will die back, sort of September, October time. Quite often that seed pod will then split open you'll see little pale uh, sort of tan coloured seeds. Now with the seeds on these it, it's best really to, to sow them straight away. Sow them in the autumn when, they're, when the, the seeds uh, mature, just on the surface of some moss peat. Keep them in a cold greenhouse, give them a good freeze over winter. But these are temperate plants, they're North American, so they'll only germinate after they've had a cold rest period. Just imagine if the seeds are shed, they germinate straight away in the autumn. The first uh, frost of the winter will kill any seedlings off because they'll be too small to, to withstand that freezing temperature. 
and so the safeguard, the seeds will only germinate after a cold period. It's known as stratification. It's like a safeguard against them germinating too early. When they're shed, there's, like most seeds, they're actually dormant, and there's a process that's required to, to, to break their dormancy. Some plants, say for example some of the South African plants, um, some of the South African drosera species, and a lot of non-carnivorous plants as well, like proteas, they'll only germinate after a hot period, quite often involving fire as well. They're, they're shed and they're dormant and they need a, an external factor of some kind to break that dormancy. And it varies from plant to plant, depends where they're, where they're found. But that's how to pollinate Saracenia flowers.